so now we're ready to put the front cover back on and we are ready to put the the um, head cover back on the valve cover and you can see from our last shot we've got all of the chain the timing components installed we have a new chain uh, new guides and there's a new tensioner going on to the uh, with the cover and uh, the, the only thing I'd have to say about putting these these uh, timing components on is get a hold of a factory service manual and have a look and see what they what they tell you for the timing there's marks this engine was very easy to do there's lots of marks they're well explained in the manual and they're they're clearly visible there's two two timing marks right here on the two cam uh, drive gears they're supposed to be aligned uh, if I twitched the crankshaft they'd come into alignment so we're good there and then uh, down below on the crank you can see the little dot on the right hand side of the crank sprocket and also the keyway on the crank is straight up and that's when you're at top dead center so the foolproof thing, uh, that's, that's one part of the timing. The foolproof part is that the timing chain has colored links. You can see here there's a dark gray or almost a black link. That is to mate with the dot as, as we've got it there. And on the cams, same thing. There's the dot on the exhaust cam with the dark link. And here's the dot, sorry, the uh, groove on the exhaust cam gear with the other dark link so once all the, those dots and dark links are lined up you really can't go wrong um, a little procedure about how to engage the tensioner on that uh, how to engage the tensioner that acts on this slipper and that keeps tension on the chain it's a self-regulated type of tensioner a ratcheting design so that's uh, activated once the cover gets put on in terms of putting the cams in, there was nothing special there. They're both installed and we torque, torque down the caps. So we're ready for the next step. So we've got the we got the cover on. Yeah. The front engine cover is back on. You can see all the blue RTV sealant. Yeah. We've got the crank pulley on. Now, you did mention that we would say the trick for getting that on there yeah work limiting bars yeah so we use that to get that pulley nut on there you put them on a ratchet like that no oh on no an impact <laughs> impact driver so we put them on an impact wrench and they we have already calibrated these in the past you need to be careful this says 100 foot pounds but that is dependent on what your source pressure is so depending on your setup you just need to uh, calibrate them using a, a normal torque wrench just get close and uh, so that's what we use and it saves a lot of headache trying to hold the crank or hold the engine while you're tightening the big uh, crank pulley nut so what do you do just rattle on it with the impact wrench as much you know continuously until you notice it stop rotating correct and then you know the maximum torque that torque limiting bar could apply is the value on the torque limiting bar right correct okay makes it easy yeah adjuster How did you oh cam chain chain, chain adjuster yeah so that's back here that's a little tricky so it's a spring-loaded affair hey look we can show you what you got a new one put it yeah why'd you do that put a new one in for, uh, because we were in there okay and um, it's not taking that cover off is such a pain I feel that a lot of these parts should just be replaced we did a new chain so we did a new uh, tensioner okay so the way the tensioner works is like a ratchet in there and that side yeah so you can release the ratchet with this little awl yeah or paw i should say so it goes in like that it's right now it's in the fully compressed packed position yeah so when you insert this in the cover you need to engage a force this way yeah that unlocks this little yeah thing. watch see how that uh, little yeah. hook fell that fell back and now this way. will ratchet out you can't push it back in it's ratchets and that goes all the way out but you need to be careful that you don't over tension the chain so what we did and what the 
book recommends, the manual, the Toyota manual, is, let's see if I can get this back in here with one hand. Uh, it's not very professional for you to be working uh, with an ice cream in your hand. Yeah. With, you wouldn't catch it. Uh, that's a little much. Yeah. Okay. Is that how you did the whole job? No, no. I usually have both hands. Hand. Yeah. Okay. So what we did was we had the cover on and we left the, what's called the um, timing chain slipper. That's it. Timing Tension, chain tensioning, tensioning slipper okay. is the big long yep. uh, slipper that this this um, tensioner acts on. It's not a cone. It would actually be the... So it's uh, not an actual ice cream no, cone? No, no. It's... <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah. Just checking. Yeah. It's not made of glass. So then once it was in there, um, Dave had just jiggled this. It didn't take much. It's pretty sensitive. You just need to push on the end. And then it popped out and it, and it reached its equilibrium. So how did he how did he trigger that? Did he just push on the chain to cause the what chain did to go do, tight? Dave, to trigger it? I or, pushed it in until it was tight and then it went. You, so you it, heard it spring? I assumed it spring because the, the chain went tight. Correct. Yeah, so it, okay. it triggered itself. But when based, this came flush with the engine or whatever the yeah. it hit, then I knew it was in. Yeah, okay. it, it, so it triggered itself with the resistance of the slipper. Slipper the, against the, it. Yeah, timing change but slipper. But at least it was only pushing with its own force. Correct. What you don't want to do, here's what I think you don't want to do, is when you're installing this, have that timing chain slipper push all the way back because then when this pops <coughs> it's gonna go way too far and then you'll have too much load on the chain okay so just let that slipper go free and that's not just me that's the manual yeah uh, that uh, and as you rotated the engine I could swear that I heard a few ticks on there. maybe you did yeah so maybe it was reaching it's popping out a bit more yeah. uh, until it kind of equalized I don't mind this thing coming out under its own influence its own yeah I just okay. don't like us interfering and making it come out too far okay so that's new. Good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And they can tell you to crank it. They tell you to roll. Yeah, it. That's they tell you to roll it backwards. Mm. And that's what would pop it. They tell you to roll it backwards. They give you two options. That's okay. one option. Okay. Okay. Good to know. I roll felt... it backwards, and I think what that does is tensions the chain on the normally slack yep. side. Yep. And hits that slipper. Engages that slipper, and then the slipper hits the um, tensioner, and bang, shoots it out. Yep. They tell you to do that, but they say. It says right in the actually the wording. I'll read the wording. I paraphrase it. If plunger not extended, push slipper into the tensioner using a screwdriver to release hook, allowing plunger to extend. So you would go in there and jiggle that um, that slipper until it triggers that tensioner. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that's the tensioner in. Yeah. And then you put what's next? Valve cover. Yeah, we put the valve cover on. New gasket under there? Yep, we did a new gasket. You don't need to, but we chose to because there's... So this gasket has a perimeter gasket. Yep. And then it's also got these little rings that seal the chambers to the spark plugs, the coil chambers. They always leak oil, don't they? They leaked oil, yeah, these two middle ones. So we said, all right, let's replace all the... It comes in a kit, so we did all new... Yep, smart. Valve cover gaskets. Okay, and so you torque down all those bolts and they're not torqued yet but we will yeah okay. all these ones all around some of them have the harness um, brackets on them. right some of them look like they have funny kind of a setup what's this for holds the cover on I bet right there the overall yeah. cover okay yeah there's a cosmetic plastic so cover. you're gonna torque this but you're not gonna torque that because that's what the plastic Correct. covers hold on yeah. okay good Fuel and rails next, back in. Fuel and, rails back in, yeah. yeah. And uh, the next step is going to be to put our front intake manifold on. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. We'll probably do the alternator. Okay. We'll do the alternator, the power steering pump. These accessories that were in the front that were buried, uh, that had buried the cover, mm -hmm. we'll now put them back on. Then we'll do the intake manifold and then the exhaust. It's arbitrary order. I'm just choosing that. Okay. And then power steering pump. And then the power steering pump, yep, and then we'll change the oil, fill it with coolant, and start it up. Make sure you put some anti-seize on that lower power steering pump bolt that we had to fight with. Absolutely. Because, yep. not that you're probably going to have to do this job again, but that power steering pump may wear out. And getting it off of there, getting that bolt out of there would be much easier. Agreed. And there are a couple of tips to make assembly of the front of the engine much easier. The proper sequence or the best sequence we found was to do the power steering pump first so there are two bolts that hold that on 
and then there is the engine mount and we had had this off there are three bolts that connect from the engine mount to the engine and the bottom of those three bolts is the most tricky and it, in fact if you do that next you'll be okay make sure that you don't have the idler pulley uh assembly that that pivoting spring-loaded bracket with the idler pulley on it make sure that's not installed and the belt is not in the way because if they are they greatly complicate the installation of that bottom of the three bolts on the engine bracket so do that engine bracket then do the idler pulley then uh, re reset the belt uh, put the belt back in uh, then you finish up by connecting the three motor mount bolts and uh, also one other thing to get that idler pulley assembly bolt out it's really long and it hits the hits the fender so what we had to do is jack the engine up about an inch and a half to get that bolt out and uh, there's just no way to get it unless you jack up the engine so don't be afraid to do that with this motor mount disconnected you can jack up the engine without straining anything don't get carried away but uh, you do need to jack it up so we did that we um, filled it we changed the oil and filter because uh, it uh, needed to be done since the head gasket we, we were worried about oil and or, uh, coolant in the oil uh, filled it with coolant 